Hello Miners, and welcome back for another DRG update. Season 2, Rival Escalation. As the title implies, our rivals are still going strong in their efforts to disrupt our mining operations. And in fact, they're escalating their efforts. But what does that mean for you, the loyal employees of Deep Rock Galactic? To set us off, a new warning is now active. Rival Presence. Hordes of rival robots are clustering in the caves, seemingly just waiting to spring on anything carrying the DRG insignia. Some will likely see this as a welcome distraction from the usual teeth and claws of the Glyphids, but management still doesn't recommend underestimating these Cybertronic abominations. Secondly, our rivals are setting up new communications equipment, which must be shut down. In the all-new Rival Signal season event, you must interrupt the operation of the Rival Communications Router, hack its antenna nodes before the timer runs out, and shut it down before the entire thing explodes. Timing and precision will be of the essence if you want to obtain the data cell stored inside the router. Lastly, Scancom has been picking up new readings in the caves, and disturbing rumors have started trickling in from the surface. Our rivals have unleashed something down there. Something specifically designed to lure you in, hunt you down, and terminate you with extreme prejudice. Beware, miners. The rival nemesis is on the prowl. To counter the new challenges ahead of us, management has approved the next performance pass, and several things have been tweaked and expanded on compared to Season 1. By popular request, we have roughly doubled the amount of season event bonuses to collect by completing season events down in the caves. Also, we've added a brand new season challenge to the pool, paying out fat stacks of performance points and precious scrip. All of that, of course, results in rewards, both from simply gaining levels in the performance pass, as well as spending scrip in the cosmetic tree. We got some good stuff for you. Resource caches, beards, paint jobs, helmets, and yet another full set of weapon framework for all guns. So, consider yourself warned. Season 1 is coming to an end soon. Spend those scrip if you got them, or they will be lost. And if you haven't managed to get through Season 1 completely, have no fear. Any cosmetics you've yet to unlock will simply be moved into lost packs, cargo crates, matrix cores, and perhaps even the shop located on the space rig. Nothing goes away, and everything can still be obtained. All that aside, management is not sending you in to handle these new threats empty-handed. To complement the four new primary weapons introduced in Season 1, Season 2 brings with it four new secondary weapons. The scout has picked up the Nishanka Boltshark X80, an extremely versatile crossbow designed for large game, built especially to fire a wide selection of customized bolts. Acid bolts, electric bolts, fire bolts, triple bolts, you name it. It is time to go hunting. Meanwhile, the engineer has come up with a shard diffractor. To keep it from detonating like a thousand pounds of TNT, the thing is limited to short controlled bursts. But don't let that depress you. It's powered by a 12-pound chunk of armor and heartstone, and is able to vomit forth beams of raw energy as thick as your leg, reducing anything in its path to a mound of cinders. The gunner gets the Arms Core Coil Gun, a hand-carryable, fully-fledged electromagnetic accelerator. It fires solid tungsten spheres with enough force to punch clean through solid rock. The only limit to this pocket-sized war crime is the battery pack, which is sizable. And finally, the driller has been given the Colette Wave Cooker. An ingenious mix of lab equipment and kitchen utensil, the Wave Cooker does exactly what its name implies. Point it at something organic and watch it cook from the inside out until it bursts in a gout of viscous fluids. Recipe book not included. As always, these new weapons come with full upgrade trees, weapon frameworks and paint jobs to find, and around two dozen brand new weapon overclocks to uncover. Meanwhile, things are changing over in the shop. From now on, you can choose to pay for cosmetics with Phaseonite instead of credits, in case you're saving up for specific upgrades. Phaseonite can be found in the Caves of Hoxies as you go, and you will also earn it from the newly implemented Cosmetic Mastery system in the shop. How does that work? Simple. Increase your Cosmetic Mastery by buying stuff. 
And not to worry, shoppers, the system will work retroactively. Everything you've already bought will be counted towards your cosmetic mastery progression. For those dwarves returning unsuccessfully from missions, we have finally received a shipment of medical gowns. For the sake of overall morale and sanity, we urge all employees to keep their underwear on when waking up in one of these. And lastly, a new addition to the Forge. Previously, Forge Mastery granted completely random and fused matrix cores. Now you'll be given a choice. Two character classes are picked at random. You pick which of them get the core. Some choice is better than no choice, as they say. As always, a new update also means a new pack of DLC. And this time we're presenting the Robot Rebellion Pack. Face our oppressors in the ragged remains of past glory, crudely coupled together during those long nights spent on the space rig waiting for the next engagement. Management wishes you all safe, happy, and lucrative missions and cooperation, miners. And welcome to Season 2, Rival Escalation. This is Mission Control, signing off. Rock and Stone.